We have a short one for you today on the Fractal Torrent case. There's a recall going on right now where Fractal is recalling the 9P Slim fan hub that is included in the torrent. The torrent was reviewed very highly by us and by other media outlets as well. So it's been well received. Unfortunately, there's a defect. It's a short circuit issue. Uh, in some ways, it reminds us of the NZXT issue with its own PCB for PCIe risers. And this is all very unfortunate. We were greatly disappointed to see the email come through about the problem. But on the upside, uh, relieved to see that Fractal is doing the right thing, got ahead of everyone else, put the message out there themselves that there's a defect, is taking all the actions to recall it themselves without an independent media outlet, asking the government to get involved to recall like the NZXT H1, for example, is what we're referencing. So they've done the right things, Fractal that is, uh, but there's still a problem. We need to walk through what it is. We'll talk about how you can address it yourself if you have one of these and what Fractal is doing and uh, get everyone up to speed. Before that, this video is brought to you by Arctic and the Liquid Freezer 2 line of liquid coolers, which tested among the best in our thermal charts for CPU coolers. The Arctic Liquid Freezer series has had continual advancements since our original review, with updates in the mounting kit, including an AMD offset bracket for better thermals and a longer warranty. Arctic also has its MX5 thermal compound available on the market now if you need some thermal paste for your regular maintenance. Learn more at the links in the description below. So first up, there is a new fan hub in the Fractal Torrent. That is called the Nexus, no relation, 9P Slim, and it has not shipped with any other case. First thing you need to know, this is the only model affected. Fractal's other cases, as far as we're aware, don't have that controller or their hub, so they're not affected. Uh, only applies to the Torrent. In Fractal's words, quote, we have received information about a total of less than five consumer units being affected by this issue. Kind of weird to say less than five. Uh, we're assuming that means four. Not really sure why you'd say less than five. It's odd. But uh, they say a couple units affected. We have to give Fractal credit for getting ahead of this before we discovered it or before one of you all discovered the issue, emailed us, and then we had to investigate, dig into it, and try to sort of force compliance with what is right, like we've done with Gigabyte. Uh, Newegg and, and um, previously NZXT. So it's good to see at least that much. It's good to see Fractal has learned from those before it uh, and is trying to do the right thing. Let's go through Fractal's statement. When Fractal emailed us, it said, quote, we are writing to inform you that we've discovered an issue with the torrent. We received a few support tickets detailing a problem with the fan hub, which we have now determined was caused by a manufacturing defect. Upon closer inspection, our development team has decided the design of the fan hub PCB does not live up to our quality standards. I'm going to pause there and just point out that they've said manufacturing defect and PCB design. Those are two key things that are potentially different things to be aware of for this. Fractal continued. It said, quote, we are coordinating with resellers to stop sales of the torrent as we work to resolve this issue and provide an updated PCB design. We will be offering existing customers the opportunity to register for a replacement kit as soon as it becomes available or if they prefer assistance with a refund. And then this part they said to us, we're giving you a heads up that this is what we're working on right now and we'll release more information shortly. We are absolutely committed to making sure that every aspect of the torrent, including its fan hub, lives up to the high praise the case has received. Fractal then offered to get on a call, though we haven't taken them up on that. It doesn't really seem necessary at this point. So. Uh, the good is that Fractal's aware that there's a problem and has alerted people. Fractal also is seemingly maybe painfully aware that this is not the thing you want to have happen after you get a bunch of praise from a notoriously critical media outlet, especially, about your new product. So very poor timing there for where it's one of the best things uh, that has come through our lab from Fractal in terms of a, the, the tone we apply to the review. We haven't been more positive about a Fractal product in the past. We've been very negative about a few of them. Uh, so not good timing, but how they're handling it appears to be at least good. Uh, I would be personally a lot more disappointed, maybe a little, little frustrated if we had discovered the problem later uh, and Fractal was trying to cover it up like other companies have done. So they didn't do that. That's the upside. Uh, we asked Fractal a number of questions. Fractal was extremely cooperative, answered all of them very quickly. A lot of the companies we work with will do that. We'll get back to you, and then they kind of hope we forget about it, and then they give us not useful answers. Fractal did actually answer quickly and provided useful answers. So here's what you need to know. All buyers will receive a replacement. If you have purchased one, you will get a replacement. 
Uh, additionally, Fractal, as it said in its email, is pulling back cases that have shipped to distributors, suppliers of any kind, uh, and retailers and anyone else in the chain. So they're actually recalling physically the product to a Fractal location to have the fan hub replaced. That's the important part. That means they're not sitting in the channel, as it's called, sitting on shelves waiting to be sold while there's a known issue. This is very rare. Normally, companies in, in our experience will continue to sell through a product while they work on a potential fix, and then they kind of put out a soft statement saying, if you want a replacement, let us know. We'll send it to you. Uh, but in this case, Fractal is actively trying to seek customers who have managed to purchase one and get their units upgraded. So that's good. Uh, Fractal expects a two to three week turnaround time for a replacement part. So that's your expected downtime. I'm going to go ahead and extend that for them. So it's probably going to be more like five once you account for uh, delays that they aren't expecting right now. Fractal is working with a third party company to uh, revise the PCB design. It is a short circuit. Uh, Fractal also used the word hazard when talking about it. We'll go over that too. Fractal's intermediary solution, we asked what should people do now? And they said, unplug the fan hub. It's not this one, this is a different model, but looks similar to this. Unplug the fan hub and disconnect uh, the fans from it, obviously. And then if you want to keep using the computer, you are, as far as they're saying to us, safe to plug the fans into the motherboard. The only reason that would be a problem is if the fans were problematic. So we asked Fractal, is there a problem with the fans? And they said, no, not as far as they're aware. It's just the fan hub. So if you have one of these, take the hub out, plug the fans into the motherboard, you're good to go. If you need another solution, you, certainly there's plenty on the market you could buy in the, the meantime. Be advised, however, uh, if you have limited motherboard fan headers, don't split them too many ways because fan he headers are limited on how much current they can take before they melt. That's on the motherboard. That's everyone. That's not a fractal thing. So you don't want to plug three relatively high current fans into one header. A lot of headers are rated for about one amp. Some of them can do two amps. They'll often tell you in the manual. So just check that if you're going to start doing Y connectors and daisy chaining things. This is often a sticking point for warranties, repairs, anything like this. So we asked, are there any exclusions at all? Are there any regional exclusions? Sometimes you'll see the US market get addressed, but nobody else in the world. Fractal says there are no exclusions, period. All regions are eligible, and all customers are eligible. Uh, the expected fix is a redesign of the fan hub. They are keeping the same functionality, which is not much. You plug fans into it. And uh, that's about it. So if you own a torrent, disconnect it. Uh, wait, we're going to call it again about five weeks. Two or three seems maybe unrealistic to get it, especially get it to the customer. That's not going to happen. But uh, you know, maybe four or five weeks. And there are official instructions available on Fractal's website. We'll link all that below. It's extremely easy to remove the fan hub. There's a couple screws in it. Unplug the cables from it, plug the fan cables in somewhere else that supports them, uh, and that's it. That's all there is to it. Very simple. As for what the issue is, obviously we're very curious about that. So we asked Fractal, uh, since they're being open with us anyway, it seems prudent to just ask instead of dedicate days to trying to, to reverse engineer it. So according to Fractal's public post, the short circuit is caused by the fan hub, quote, being damaged in manufacturing. It was described to us as both a manufacturing defect and a PCB design error uh, or shortcoming. So Fractal is currently in the process of finalizing the redesign. We've asked for schematics or diagrams or photos or renders. None are available right now. It's been, uh, there's oversight from a third party company that's going to, I guess, make sure they do it right this time. So it's unclear specifically where the original flaw was. We have some guesses. We'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, momentarily, and it does appear to be more similar to the NZXT H1 riser issue than just about anything else. Uh, the fact that Fractal used the word hazard implies to us that probably fire normally comes before it. So uh, definitely just take the fan hub out of there, even if you don't have a problem right now, just like the NZXT H1. So our advice for that one, right? We said take the riser out, even if it seems fine now and replace it with something else. In this case, wait for them, get a replacement elsewhere, whatever. But uh, when the word hazard is used to describe an electronic part, it almost exclusively means fire is possible, even if unlikely. Possible is enough for fire that you should remove it. Uh, so please don't be lazy about that. Take it out now if you even have one of these cases. The Nexus 9P Slim is extremely simple. It's much more so than the Slim Nexus Plus 2 fan hub that was found in cases like the Mesh by 2 
or the old school rectangular Nexus Plus hub, again, no relation, found in cases like the Define R6. The Nexus Plus 2 is this one. It takes 12 volts and 5 volts. It does that from a SATA connector. Uh, and PWM input from a four pin header. It controls three PWM fans with a single, uh, with the PWM signal. It also controls an additional six three pin fans beyond the four pin PWM fans. Now this Nexus Plus 2 fan hub is actually a relatively complex piece of hardware. It is not the one that's affected. It has to intelligently raise or lower the voltage of the three pin headers based on the PWM input, hence smart hub in the name. The surface is covered in SMDs and ICs, and there are four standoffs directly soldered to its surface to avoid any concerns about chewing up the PCB during installation. The 12 volt traces are extra wide and are clearly visible on the back of the board. The UL component registration on the board was issued to Huizhou Huayan Electronics Co. Limited for a double sided PCB. We aren't PCB design experts by any means. We don't pretend to be. We're good at testing, but that's about the limit. So, from what we can tell of the Nexus 9P Slim, given our knowledge gap here, uh, the 9P Slim is far simpler. You can tell that by looking at both of them without being an expert. The hub takes 12 volts and SATA and a PWM signal from a four pin header, and it splits it out to up to nine PWM fans. There's no way to control three pin fans via this hub. All of the fans get 12 volts all the time, and there's no active circuitry on the Nexus 9P Slim. There are no service mount components at all. In fact, there are fan headers and traces, and that's it. The UL component registration was issued to Zhuhai Bunqiang Technology Co. Limited for a double-sided PCB. It seems like Fractal has switched to a new ma manufacturer for this fan hub. It's a different uh, manufacturer completely, and that helps explain how this could happen. Note also that the torrent uses a total of five PWM fan stock, so there's some justification for not using the Nexus Plus 2 since it only supports three PWM fans. So let's go over what we know, taking Fractal at its word that this is a short circuiting. I mean, that would be kind of a weird thing to, that'd be about the worst direction to go if you were going to lie about the source of the problem because it's the most severe. So we're going to take them at their word that it's a short circuit issue. That's almost always what it is. Uh, and we can talk about that. So the flaw appears to be in some aspect of the PCB that they think can be fixed with the redesign. This was true of the NZXT H1 also. So the issue with the NZXT one, just to recap, uh, there were many. So there's no plated through hole in it. It's similar in some ways to this, but not completely. They didn't have, NZXT didn't have a plated through hole. They used a screw that was too large and they used uh, the hole in the PCB was too narrow. The end result was in one area of the board, you have a screw that threads the PCB uh, and that contacts the case. And as it threads the PCB either at the factory or as the user maintains it, the issue was potentially clipping a 12 volt plane in the PCB and connecting it to ground, thus potentially causing a fire. Uh, or if you were lucky, just a burnout of the components and then the fire went out. Ours didn't, it kept burning, we put it out ourselves. So that's the, the worst possible scenario for this. And it sounds like this fractal issue is maybe more towards that camp where we looked at it. Uh, the screws on fractals, at least what we received, are not so wide that they're threading the PCB. So that's good. They're not threading it. It is not plated through hole though, so it doesn't have that layer of protection. Don't always need it, but uh, it would help. And it, it also, it's fairly close. So what we're thinking is depending on how the factory is dealing with this, because they call it a manufacturing defect, we assume that means actually an assembly defect, potentially, if not a solder defect somewhere else. Uh, if there's an assembly defect, it might be too much pressure or force on the screw. Uh, it may be clipping something if it's not being perfectly mounted or aligned, um, and, and that could potentially cause sort of a similar NZXT issue. So the logical explanations here are that either solder pads are being bridged accidentally, oops, that would be not great, or the screws are chewing into the PCB's power plane when over tightened or misaligned, possible, uh, but it's not as bad as the NZXT one where they're, they're far too big in that one. So the solder pads aren't any closer together on the Nexus 9P Slim than they were on the Nexus Plus 2, and sloppy soldering isn't really damage, which is the word Fractal used, so the second option seems the more likely. As one thing here, Fractal pointed out that the most likely result of a short circuit is that the power supply's SCP kicks in, or short circuit protection, where you'll hear click and then everything shuts off. So uh, normally that would happen without you being able to get into BIOS even. You would push the power button, you would hear a click, and then nothing would happen. 
probably leading you to think that something's dead and losing a lot of time on troubleshooting. So that's good. Now, not always going to be the case. Power supplies, we have learned, are not entirely trustworthy. So um, if SCP doesn't work, doesn't trip, doesn't have it, whatever, if you have a bad power supply, then that's where you get into trouble. But uh, hopefully someone spending this much money on a case is spending similar money on a power supply. So that recaps the entire issue, some of our considerations or speculation with it, and our conversation with Fractal. This has, well, first of all, this previous fan hub, much higher quality and uh, different spec. So that's why they couldn't just reuse it because the PWM uh, support count on this is too low for the new case, but it could have been adapted. Maybe that's what they'll do. Either way, though, Fractal is capable of designing a good fan hub, uh, but apparently didn't do it for this or didn't design enough protections in to protect against manufacturing potential incompetence or mistakes. The tone overall, however, of this video and just about every other comment section we've seen on this issue is generally positive. Why is that? Well, because as we said in the Gigabyte piece recently, everyone who makes a product is going to make a mistake of some kind at some point with the product. They're hard to make. You're trusting a ton of people on the chain. You're trusting uh, either employees or contractors to design the PCB, in this case, properly. You are trusting the, the it, they have certifications, by the way, UL and all of that, a lot of good that does. It obviously uh, helps with some things, but it's not going to catch everything if they don't cycle thousands of them through testing in UL, which they don't. But um, there's always going to be a, a link in the chain that can screw it up. So what matters is not necessarily that the issue happened unless it's of a certain severity, at which point it doesn't really matter what the response is, but rather how the company responds to it. So in this instance, uh, we have an issue which at this point has not injured anyone as far as we're aware, and an issue which is allegedly low volume. And the company got out in front of it as soon as it became aware of, we're assuming four, because they said less than five cases, and uh, is fixing it. So that's good. Weird, huh? How hard would that be, Gigabyte? Uh, they have, what, a year to do that? Anyway, so hopefully Fractal follows through successfully with this, and this isn't um, just sort of uh, uh, a fronted reaction, but it appears genuine, and we'll keep you updated. We have requested one of the, the redesigns of, again, the one that's in here, and we'll be looking at it once it comes in. But otherwise, pull the hub out for now, and uh, we can at least give Fractal praise for doing the right thing here and not trying to sort of run and hide from the issue as others have done. So good job, Fractal, on that. Uh, and good job on saying every customer gets the replacement, period. And also physically calling back something that's very expensive to ship to, to fix the issue instead of just hoping that no problems ever arise. So overall, good response, bad issue. So that's it for this one. If you're wondering how this changes our opinion of the case, the answer is not a ton from every aspect we reported on. We actually didn't find any problems with the fan hub, and apparently other reviewers didn't either. Uh, although, to be fair, the same was true of the NZXE H1. So you, know, you, you kind of roll the dice on that type of thing, and if you, if you roll a natural one, then you're screwed. Uh, but in this case, we didn't see it. So the case itself, we still like. The fan hub is the problem. If you have one, take it out, problem solved. Uh, and if you're planning to get one, it looks like you're gonna be waiting a bit maybe wait a little bit longer and let us verify that they have in fact changed something. And once, once we or someone else does that, then you're good to go on buying it as long as they fix the issue. Uh, but otherwise, we wouldn't buy it right now if you find it somewhere because you're going to have to replace a part. And that's just a pain in the ass to have to email back and forth through RMAs to get that done. So just, just skip it for now. Come back to it later when it's fixed, a couple weeks. All right, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersaccess.net if you'd like to grab one of our mouse pads, mouse mats, shirts, or other items. And you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to watch some of our behind the scenes videos. We'll see you all next time.